I want to thank you for listening to the Negative to Positive, which is brought to you by our good neighbors at State Farm. If you know me, you know I'm all about the real deal with State Farm. You get the real deal. Great service and surprisingly great rates. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Ha <laughs> ha. Stelio Chico, Pitbull, Mr. 305, but it said Mr. Worldwide, and we put it down right now. This is from negative to a positive. Got, you already know, the legendary. Woo! Miami's own. <laughs> yeah. DJ Laz. Don't stop now. Get it, get it. Man, I like that voice. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was his probably worst Uncle Luke. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. yeah uh, impersonation. Yeah. And you got the beautiful, sophisticated, powerful, and very sharp Jennifer Valdez. Hello. Good. That's right. The world-renowned producer slash DJ, Paul Blair slash DJ White Shadow. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> let me tell you something, that today is, I know, you know I always say it's special here, <laughs> yeah. negative to positive, because we're reporting live from La Pequeña Havana, Little Havana, here in the, in the 305 Day County, Miami, the bottom, bottom of the clip, Magic City. You can see I've said that a whole lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. But I'm going to tell you why this is extra special. All right? The person that we have here today is somebody that has literally taken his life from a negative to positive like we all have, but he has done it from a whole or from a whole nother level. All right. He's been counted out. They thought that he would never be able to do what he is doing. They never thought that he'd be sitting here right now. I'll be completely honest with you. I don't think this shit would ever happen. All right. But this, my friend, is my brother from another mother, literally somebody I grew up with. Somebody I hang and bang with, somebody that I am extremely proud of, especially to be here right now, because if there's one thing we were really good at was, was skipping school, so to be in this school having this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, the one, the only, Yuli, the monster, Diaz. Hey. Thank you so much, my brother. No, nah, my pleasure, man. And, and you know, it's going to be a great show, especially when I come in here and he's already clowning me. He say, hey, man, you look like you're about to do the, the 5 o'clock news. <laughs> <laughs> and he said reporting live from Little Havana. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it could be it. Me and Paul at, at the desk and then Jennifer will be the, the, the weather lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we can make Laz the weather man. I'm about to say, <laughs> I wanted that job. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> You can't move across the stage fast. <laughs> I just <pull. laughs> take it. Oh man, he, make, he knows how to make it rain though. Damn yeah, right. Bet <laughs> that. Now let me hit you with this uh, with this little story right quick. Now the holidays are coming up, and when you're gonna go visit your friends, your family, the squad, the crew, the clique, the block, whatever it may be, that's when I say eh, when it's time to get a home cooked meal that you don't have to cook. You already know what it is. It's KFC, baby. So you can order at KFC.com and just cruise through and pick it up. Now, growing up, and let me tell you, to be able to go to KFC for us was definitely a a treat, I would say. So KFC, one of my favorite things is the crispy chicken. But my favorite, and I I think it's hands down undisputed best coleslaw, is KFC coleslaw. (laughs) And I always keep talking about Colonel Sanders and the way he struggled to get people to recognize what he was trying to do. And basically, he does the same thing that we do with music, but with food. He gets everybody together and inspires everybody out there on what it is to keep going. Despite all odds or against all obstacles, there's a way to make it happen. And, and that's why I think together we both stand for global success. And for me, KFC definitely goes hand in hand with the holidays that are coming up right now. Now, the same way food makes you happy, the same way music makes you happy, the same way, the same way that if you show up with a bucket of that KFC crispy chicken, yeah, you're going to make the whole family, the whole squad, the whole clique, the crew, your friends and the block happy. <laughs> So, Yuli, man, to have you here, I want to just touch up on, on your story. I want you to tell your story and, and let everybody know. We'll get into how we grew up. Right. But more than anything, everything that you've been, been through, I would say within the last, what would you say, maybe 15 to 17 years of your life. Yeah, okay. You know, and, and how you, you know, I always call it, take a, you're taking some vacations in life. You know, you would, what do they say, gone to November? Yeah. <laughs> and... Growing up the way that we did, we had certain options. And I always tell people that the way we grew up, we just thought it was everybody's normal. We thought everybody was going through what we, what we were going through to a certain extent. So when we, I would say, hit around, when's the first time you took your first ride? About what, 19, 18? Well, well no. The well, first, first time I got you know, put in jail was at uh, 16 years old in high school for fighting in school. 
So find, find, find has been a big part of my life in the positive and negative. Yeah, you know, aspect. that makes sense. It yeah. really does make yeah. sense, ironically. It really does. Yeah. <laughs> so for, for fighting in school, which I want to put it out there, Yuli was always our protector. You know, and if you hear me on records and I tell people in interviews all the time, I ain't no thug, I ain't no gangster, I ain't no, coon, I ain't no goon, I ain't no killer. I'm a hustler. Now, Julie's another story. <laughs> <laughs> don't put, don't put I ain't in front of me. <laughs> you know, so anybody, anytime they, they had a, let's call it a situation, you know, I think you were on speed dial at that time. Nobody could text or, or email each right, other. I was on the beeper. Yeah, on the beeper, or we would call each other 1-800-CONNECT from right, the right, payphones, right, and right. then you would pick up, and then you go, hey, I'm at I'm 268 oh, coming back. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just wait at the payphone, and if you, if you didn't call back within about 30 seconds, you call back again. 1-800-CONNECT, right, can you take a collect call from, I'm at 268 <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'd probably never call back, but I'd show up for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, so around 16 was, was the first time you had a, I would say, an encounter with the law. Right. And then from there on out, it was just... Yeah, after 16, it was, it was one after another, one after another. And uh, it was, um, you know, I, I just, I, I kind of put it on myself. I, I was living this, this life that uh, I thought was cool at the time. You know, mm -hmm. I never, and, and, and I tell everybody, this is not for a pity trip, for, for a pat on the back or nothing. This is, this is facts about my life. I never had a father figure, never had a, real, a, a male role model, an uncle, a cousin. I never had somebody telling me, yo, kid, you're good at this. They chill and, and just follow this. So okay. I try to figure it out on my own. You said something that really touches home. I, I say this all the time, too. I was, I always felt I had this warrior spirit, and I was the protector for my friends. I, I, you know, I had a younger sister I never really grew up with because she was too little, so my friends were my family. Yeah. I'd, live and die for my friends at any moment. The reason I played basketball was because my friends played basketball. Once they quit doing that, I figured out what to do next because that's how we did it. You know, you know, we rolled in our little packs. And, uh, but you know, it, it, it's, at 16, uh, fighting always got me in trouble. I went through three different kindergartens for fighting. You know what I mean? I, was, I, was, I, I really did. This is a true story. And uh, I, in, in, I started in, in elementary school. And uh, my, my first attention was second grade. You know, I grew up with a single mom, a great mother. Um, she had to work, so I decided to figure life out on my own. And how did I figure out? Through my friends. Like, yo, what's cool? What's this? What's that? You know, I always got made fun of because I had to pay, pay less shoes. You yeah, know? Yeah. Yeah. The bubbles, yeah, the yeah, bubbles. Bubbles, you know? bubbles, and, and Yuli's been a size 13 since he was in sixth grade. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and that's Yuli, the truth, too. Yeah, Yuli was in middle school. He would fall asleep in class standing up. He'd yeah. be like this. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, one thing I, I would like to say, because I, I don't like to brag about my fighting when I did it on the streets, because one thing for sure, I was never a bully. I never picked fights for people. No. I, never, I never did that. I always, I always liked fighting bullies. You know, that was always my thing. So, uh, you know, once, once I got to sixth grade, I mean, I'm sorry, once I got to the 16 and I got, I, got, I, got, I got in trouble in high school, I got arrested for, uh, for fighting in school. I get sent to, to juvenile hall. I get back uh, 10 days later after the detention, and I get in a fight that day again, and I, yeah. I get expelled from every school in Dade County. They sent me to MacArthur South, which Max was South, an yeah. opportunity school, which was like you're going into a, to go fight, basically. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Um, I got out of there, graduated from a program, but I, was, I had this chip on my shoulder. I thought it was cool. I thought it was cool to get in trouble back then. Right. Um, I kind of, in a, in a weird way, I kind of put myself, you know, years later, I, uh, with a great friend of mine that we grew up with, he, uh, you know, I was starting to run with gangs and starting to do dumb things. And, and uh, this friend that we grew up with was a great guy. He never got in any type of trouble. He told me, hey, let's try the Coast Guard, man, you know. Um, we go on this buddy program, and uh, we go together to, to boot camp, all this. Ended up going to, to the Coast Guard. Um, got in all types of trouble in the Coast Guard. There was a, there's a jail that actually puts you in, in, boot, in, in Coast Guard boot camp, and I went to that too. <laughs> so, <laughs> and listen, uh, uh, you know. But, uh, you know, I signed up for four years. Uh, I found my little niche there. I was doing good. 11 months down the road, I was, uh, they, they, sent, they were sending me to diesel mechanic school in Virginia. I stopped from Miami to Tallahassee to catch a flight home. I, I ended up being in a bar with a great friend of ours, too, that we grew up with. And uh, I got in a fight that night, too. I get, actually get jumped. A bunch of guys jumped me. They sent me to the hospital. I sent two guys to the hospital with me. I got arrested, and I get kicked out of the Coast Guard. So now I had, uh, where I went from trying to change my life, this was like my first trying to make a positive move in my life. I was 19 years old, turned 20 in boot camp. Mm -hmm. Um, that gets, the rug gets pulled from under my feet. Now I'm back in jail. Yeah. Now I'm back in probation, out of the Coast Guard, get sent back to Miami on probation for, for two aggravated batteries. So that it, it, was a, it was a bar fight. It was two guys I sent to the hospital. 
while on probation here in 2000, and this ha that happened in January of 2001. May of 2002, I got in a fight in Doral, Florida with, uh, with an officer, and uh, that was my down, downhill, you know what I mean? After that, it was just court case after court case, get sent to prison, did two and a half years in prison for fighting, fought like crazy in prison, <laughs> you yeah. know? Uh, come out, and I like to tell people I went from prison to private jets because my brother... <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> My, my brother here That's was uh, my brother here was on a on an upward trajectory, you know. And and he, one thing I gotta say, uh, never left my side. I have uh, letters from him that he wrote me when I'm in prison, framed in my house. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. he's Always. he's really truly been my brother from another mother, uh, and really it's kind of the same mother at the same time. You know what I mean? It, it is. Um, and it's it, you know it's been crazy. But even when I was working with him, I came out. And I was still trying to find myself. You know, I kind of, I, I, I felt it was a weird sense of embarrassment that, that he's taking care of me. And I wanted to show him I could do so. I want to show myself. And I had kids already also at a young age. And um, so I did that with him. Traveled the world. Amazing. I, I really went from a prison cell to Korea, Belgium, Italy. <laughs> yeah, that's another story. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> that's a different podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to we'll have talk, a lot of podcasts. Yeah, we'll talk about the Italian story yeah, another yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, uh, you know, and, 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 and. <laughs> it's on the Cinemax late night. Oh, oh that's a You don't know how close you are to home base right yeah. there, bro. <laughs> but, uh, uh Skinemax. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, amazing opportunities that he has put me in. You know, amazing people he's introduced me to. It, it, it was awesome. But at that time, I was lost, man. So people, just to, to, to go off subject for some people ask me now in interviews, yo, you're 39, you're older than People uh, retire at your age. Would you, would you think, you, wouldn't you like I've done it to 10 years ago? I go, me 10 years ago would have messed this all up, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah. Perfect yeah, timing. Right, right, right. I, I agree, man. Right. And, and, you know, we did have, by default, somebody that always tried to look out for us, which was Eddie from right, 24th Street. Of course. May he, you know, of rest in paradise. And when we talk about mothers, you know, I, me personally, when I would go to anybody's, I was the kid that lived in every neighborhood. <laughs> right. Every neighborhood. <laughs> you, you never knew, like, six months ago. I don't know where he's at. I just kind of pop up. <laughs> Rent was due. Time to go. <laughs> <laughs> but, but out of all the moms, the moms didn't like me around because I was just, I, I was different, you know? I'm a good kid. I always, what I, I always say, never been a troublemaker, just always been around some trouble, right? right? <laughs> but Yuli's mom loved me. Right. She always showed me love. Always, she never had a problem when I needed to stay over or if I didn't have a place to stay, you know, or, or, or no food or whatever, whatnot. His house was always my home. And, and then it turned into that vice versa because then we ended up, you ended up living with, with me and my mom in Wynwood, yes, you know? And that's when he started to, started to get, uh, I would say coming out of prison and started fighting professionally. Right, 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 right. You know, and I, I always tell him there was, there was a day that when this became, how can this I This was say? actually before prison because uh, that was in, uh, Wynwood was what, 2001 too. Yeah. And I went to prison in 2004, 5, and 6. So it was right, right before, right. oh, it was Coast Guard then. My right, 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 yeah, right. So therefore, you know, so all this goes on, and I see the potential, I see the talent. I, I've seen it throughout all the years now, you know. Anything he put his mind to, when he played ball, he could play ball. I mean, anything that he wanted to do, he could do. But then I started to get a little hot. Like after, I would say after that trip in Europe or whatever, but not, I, you know, I sat down with Yuli and I said, Yuli, bro, you know, I love you with everything that I got and the, the truth, but I, I just can't be around you no more because whatever you're involved with, I don't know. That's none of my business. But I just know that if you get jammed up, I'm going to pop up for some shit that I ain't involved with. Right. And where I'm going right now, partner, I just ain't got time for that. Like, we're, we're growing over here to, to um, I see where we're going, right? right? And to, to interject on that, that, that actually, I'm sorry to interrupt no, go ahead, go ahead. You, but I feel like that made our friendship even stronger. Yeah. Because there's a, I would say, I, 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 not to put a number, a high percentage of people would be like, oh man, forget this guy. Oh, this right. No, I saw it and I go, I told myself, you're absolutely right. I can't mess up what you got going on because of my stupidity. Well, that's real. We always talk, never lost contact, yep. but, but, but the working together and all that kind of, kind of fell back. And, I had, and it took some years for me to find myself. So the, therefore, and, you know, that, that day hurt me. It hurt me a lot, dog, to be able to have that conversation with you because I just don't run around telling people I love them. You know, that's not, I think that's something sacred. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And to have them here now and to watch what you've done in the last, I would say, three to four years with your life, I can't even begin to tell you how motherfucking proud I am of you. I'm not crying, you're crying. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm about to, I'm about to. You feel me?
El cloro. <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by Clorox, which we call el cloro. When it counts, uh, trust Clorox. <laughs> Always. That's something we all grew up with. I mean, you hear me laughing because that's all we hear coming up as a little kid. Oye, coge el cloro. Ten cuidado con el cloro. Oye, cloro, vamos. Coge el cloro para limpiar eso. It was just something that was uh, always needed, always used, and always trusted. You know, the same way that, that we trust those on the front line right now in these crazy times to give us the right care for our families, we trust Clarks or Cloro to give us a safe, protected home. Now, when you come in the studio, when you're going in and out of all these different areas and you touch a lot of different hands and different things, it's always good to be on the safe side. Use a little Clorox. <laughs> I'll say it again, el cloro, because I want to make sure that when you guys listen to this, you guys know in Spanish what el cloro means. Make sure everything is disinfected. You know, growing up, if you're from the Latin community, Latin culture, or para todos los latinos allá afuera, tú sabes lo que estoy hablando cuando hablo del cloro. Para que todo esté claro, usa cloro. <laughs> that means so that everything is clear, always use Clorox. And they, in my family, they've always used it to disinfect everything, and, and there's a reason for that. It's important for me to share how to make sure your loved ones are safe. And that's why I say, échale cloro. <laughs> When it counts, trust Clorox. Dale. So to have you here and see you have that moment that you've worked so hard for in, in this last fight and having the, the, the quickest knockout in, in world combat history. sports, yeah. world history. From everything we just spoke about. That's why I wanted to set it up that way so people can understand. Because like, there's one thing I say, and I want to program it to everybody that watches this podcast, especially in this day and age. Instant gratification does not exist. Whatever comes quick, leaves quicker. Mm -hmm. Hard work. Turn your life around when everybody doubted you. Nobody wanted you around no more. Everybody knew that anybody, anywhere you show up, it's like, oh, man, there go Yuli, boy. Uh, you know, and now it's the total opposite, though. So for you to take on, it's almost like we're having an interview with you right before you're about to take off. Your plane, you just got on the plane now. It's, taking, it's backing up from the terminal, looking at the runway, and waiting for air traffic control to go. You're clear. You're clear to go. Yep. That's where you're at right now, you know? So it's another milestone slash historical step in our lives and everybody that's in this room at this point because anything that we do around here, I don't live for this fake shit that goes on on Instagram, on mo social media, oh, fame. for the follows, the likes, the fame. <laughs> You're, I'm from Dave, baby. Yeah. You got to get paid. <laughs> the fame, right? That's how Trick say. I'm from Dave. Yeah. I'm fame. I'm about to get paid. Yeah. Oh, Trick, we got to get shit right. Yeah. <laughs> Yuli, okay. go ahead, hit it. Fame. fame. We have to get paid. Born, Born and raised, raised in the, the county, county of Dave. Dave. <laughs> you crazy? I can't fuck up Trick shit on the show, man. That's crazy. <laughs> But... So, so, to, so to have you here and have this conversation with you, man, means a lot. It's priceless, and it goes to show you that when you believe, you focus, you envision, you, f you work hard. And how many people told you, man, you ain't going to make it? No, I, I'll give you, a, I'll give you a, a great example. Somebody that same day as your fight told me, hey, man, you see who Yuli's going to go up against? And I said, nah, I don't, I don't know who he's going up against. I just, I, I always, when I hear about him, I congratulate, I said, Have a great fight, but I don't like to be a part of the noise. You get me? I don't like to be a part of the noise. Like, he thought you were going to get knocked out or something. You feel me? Just, I just felt his energy. And I said, look, Bobo, I'll tell you what. Why don't you just wait till after the fight? <clears throat> Won't take long. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My friend, today, hit me up. Talking about, hey, did you get a chance to congratulate Yuli? <laughs> wow. Wow. And that person was me. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Come on, Paul. <laughs> nah, nah, if Yuli would have hit you like he no, hit buddy, I, 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 no, your head's gone. No. I, I would have just fallen over when I walked in the ring. Yeah, yeah. So, man, let me. So, all this hard work that you've put in, Yuli, to this point, because you've gone to DR to fight, you've gone to Colombia to fight, you've gone to Italy, uh, Italy, Mexico, all my clubs, yeah, Mexico, Mexico. Yeah. All my clubs. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, Laz, that's that. Appreciate that's, that. But they didn't yeah. pay me for those. No. <laughs> <laughs> and and it, now that, that where you're at right now, number one, how does it feel? Number two, what do you see? And number three, how do you feel about the people that were just looking at you going, at 39, thinking that he could fight, that he's a boxer or slash MMA or slash bare knuckle? You know, how does it feel, Bobo? It, it, it is still unbelievable. I still look at the video and I, I is that me? <laughs> I, it, it is still an unbelievable feeling. Um, and I've, I, I spoke about the same thing that you're saying. I go, I don't wish, I, don't, I wish everybody nothing but success. Yes, sir. I love everybody. I want everybody to, to, to conquer everything. 
But I know that that moment, I know there was a lot of doubters, and, I, and the dude I fought was a big muscle-bound dude, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I know those three seconds, I shocked the world. I made a ripple effect yes, around sir. the world. Yes, you, you know did. I mean? and, I'm, and it's hard to say how I feel. You know, you know I've, I've, I've been asked that question, and, and it's hard to say because it's still unbelievable. I'm still, you know what I mean? I, my father, I said this story earlier, and you know my father well. Mm -hmm. my, I haven't spoken to my father in four years. been four years, I, me and that man have one word. Wow. Um, two days ago, he hits me. We have an hour conversation because I came out on a newspaper in Spain that he, because my father's uh, an author. He's written books. You know, he's published everywhere. Real respect the guy in that book world. He called me. We had an hour. He's, he's incredible. And then from there, he's, he's, you know, we've, now we've kind of, in, in two days, we've developed back a, a, a friendship and a, you know, and yeah. he's, been, he's, he's proud of you. He's proud of me. He's proud of you, he's bro. He's proud of me. Yeah. He's proud of me. And, and it's an amazing feeling to see this. And, and more than anything, more than anything, to see the, 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 the look on my kids' faces, to see my kids' reactions, to see them, you know what I mean? And on top of that, too, to see him, man, to be here right now with you guys, you know what I mean? I've always loved and respected you. You know I look to you. You're a great inspiration to me, you know what I mean? And I don't just say that. You are, you, brother. Bro, you know, the world of me. You know I've, we've been together from, from the basketball days where I told you, I tell people the story. At 14 years old, we're sitting in his, apart in his apartment, and he has a basketball, and he signs, and he goes, Julie, See, the signature is going to be famous one day. He didn't know, he thought, he didn't know, he, he thought it was going to be for <laughs> basketball. Most you know what I mean? Bones. But, and, and, you know, and, <laughs> yeah. Most of the smartest yeah. player ever yeah, yeah. in NBA history. But, but you know, he to, could follow. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah he, follow. he could. Yeah, he could. Yeah. And he entered a dunk competition. No, that was fun. Yeah, 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 another yeah. small guy. Yeah. But to, to, to be here today with you guys and to be talking about this here today and to see myself on USA Today, I was on Yahoo News last night. It was Donald Trump, Obama, Tom Brady, and Julie Diaz. <laughs> <laughs> Like, bro, you know what yeah, I mean? To problem. have to have my mother beyond proud, you know what I mean? And and the people that I really, really care about, that are close to me, that I that I value their opinion, to be proud of me is is something else. Yeah, and, you know and I mean? let me tell you, you can see he could he could jump back in the day too. Yeah, yeah, when, yeah. When yeah, he went yeah. to go clear the road. The only reason I didn't care is because the guy was coming up and I didn't want to crash into him, so I saved his life. <laughs> But uh, yeah, to, for these people to, to, to be proud of me, for you guys to be proud of me is, is really, you know, what's, what's, what I feel. That's what I feel, and, and it's so great. I'm right in this moment. We spoke, and you told me the same thing you told me many years ago. You know, it, it's not easy to get to this certain point, but once you get there, it's hard to maintain it. Yes, sir. Stay focused. Stay focused. On Sunday morning, I keep running my two miles. Yesterday was Monday. I'm back in the gym. I'm, I'm back at it like I haven't even... Like yeah, it's laser focus happened. now because you yeah. know they want to come and knock your head off now. Exactly. Now, now you're a target. Uh -huh. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. But that's a great place to be. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And, and, and back to what I was saying, it, it is a great place to be, but you in my ear like that, having special people like this, very powerful people, you know what I mean? Powerful in the world, powerful to me, but at, at the end of the day, behind closed doors, this is my brother. This is a whole different thing, you know what I mean? But it means a lot to me. And to have that is that that is the biggest feeling, biggest greatest feeling to me, you know. Yeah, how oh, man, well, oh, to to many more, and like I said, esto es, it's it's the beginning now Absolutely. of everything that you've been working hard for, and how you taking your life from a negative. So positive, yeah, absolutely so positive. And, and, and sorry, but people have been telling me, "Hey, this is just the beginning." I go, "Yeah," but I came out the gate with a with a jump. <laughs> hey, sorry, boy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Talk, I, talk to me, Miss Right Banana. I think. <laughs> yes, catch up. <laughs> it's Chug <laughs> Night, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's a. Uh, it's not just pride either. Proud. I mean, everybody's proud, but dog, people are excited for you, bro. Yeah. Like, this yeah. is like yeah. your door just opened up, and you got so much I, I, ahead of you, yeah, bro. It's you, crazy. You know what? And it's something. It's, sorry, I, I want to get back to you too. I'm sorry, but. It, this is something, it's something new to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've always gotten a little attention because I've always been good with people. One thing, you know, now, you were, you, you yeah. were I'm a social butterfly. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I was famous before before this. I, you know, I had my little street fame. Then I started doing this. I do things for the community. You know, I've been out, out yeah. on the news. Over, like in Miami, yeah, now it's, it's international attention. Yeah. You know, but it, it's still, it's still weird to me in the sense that, you know, when people come up to take a picture of me, and this is a bad choice of words, but it's kind of like, I feel like I'm embarrassed. I'm like, yo, I'm just like you, bro. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to do. I want a picture with you. You know what I mean? <laughs> and and it's, 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 it's such a... It's humbling, man. It is. It's, it's, it's a very humbling, humbling experience, man. Go ahead, Jenny, my bad. Yeah. You're yeah. good. I'm going to tell you what. When money is tight, sometimes you might think you don't have the luxury to, to invest in yourself. But let me tell you, that's the best investment. When you invest into yourself and you invest into your mental state. So Talkspace has made sure that it's something that's within reach for everybody. It's something affordable. The reason that I feel good about talking about what they're doing at, at Talkspace is that they're on a mission to make therapy affordable and accessible for everybody. Imagine that. And if there's anything we need in these times right now is everybody with the same mind. <laughs> That's for sure. So for everybody, you have thousands of licensed therapists. 
train for the specialties that people are suffering from. So if it's anxiety or depression or relationship goals, no matter what, Talkspace will find you the perfect therapist for your goals. And Talkspace is secure. They have the latest encryption technology to keep things private. The bottom line is we all need someone to talk to and touch base with. Pero mira, as listeners of Negative to Positive, you get $100 off your first month on Talkspace. To match up with your perfect therapist, go to Talkspace.com or download the app. Make sure you use the code PITBULL to get $100 off your first month and show your support for the show. PITBULL and Talkspace.com. Um, my question to you is, yeah. hearing your story, knowing what you come from, what event or series of events occurred that had you flip that mindset of like, this fighting was a negative aspect in my life, got me locked up, to now it's a positive aspect and I'm out here and it's my profession. And now people are highlighting me for it. Yeah, that's, great. What? that's a great question. That's a great question, a great question. So I used to watch boxing matches on TV. I used to go to boxing matches. Matter of fact, when I came out of prison, we went together to a boxing match in, uh, in the Mahi Temple, which doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, yeah. You had your robe from, uh, from one of your album covers. Yeah, they, I think robe. they kept that robe, by the way. Right, right, right. <laughs> uh, um, anyways, but the, the point being, like, I would be at these events and, and I'd have this... Like, bro, I could do this. You know, I did my amateur boxing 20 years ago, and I'm like, bro, this is like something I really wanted to do. I really wanted to do this. And, I'm, and, and, and I, I didn't know how to get there. I didn't know what steps to take. Anyways, four years ago, four, it was four years ago to the day, November 6th was four years ago today. I was living in, in Colorado as part of the, the gold rush. Uh, uh, and, um, the green rush. Right, right, right. <laughs> uh, and, and so I was over there, and... Um, a couple of things happened with the people I was doing business with, and uh, you know, I, I came home and I tell everybody, this is the honest truth. I had a come to God moment. I've done it many times, but this is the day that really, <laughs> no, you know, we all come like, no, yo, I swear I'm not gonna do it again. Right, 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 right no, but yeah, this yeah. time, this time, I, I felt it in my soul, bro. Yeah. I felt a yeah, burn. You know what I mean? And I, I, I say God, and I thank God a lot because God is my energy. You know, I, I, something has gotten me to this point in life and, and alive and right. doing what I'm doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and this, yeah, so I, a lot and of I, stories we're not talking about in this podcast. Right, 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 right. <laughs> right exactly. So, um, so that day, I, I, I was in Colorado. I got on my knees, you know, and I said, God, please, please take me out of this. I, I'm, I'm done with this. I did first time in my life. He had, he had always, you know, uh, like done, you know, done math in the sense of life. Like, wait, five years from now, bro, boy, forget about it. We're going to be here. I could never do that. I was a day-to-day -day guy. This day was the first time in my life. I was 35 years old. I go, 10 years from now, am I going to be trying to sell a bag of gold? <laughs> You know what I mean? Uh, and I'm like, no way, bro. And it's still around people I can't trust, dog. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, bro, it brought me to my knees. I cried, bro. And I was like, no, nah, it's over. Right there on the spot. I called a transport company to get my car. I had already been training, too. A little bit of box. Just to stay in shape. I always stay in shape my whole life. That's one thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, staying so, in shape, buddy. He hits like 20 push-ups. Yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> I got those uh, <laughs> way Indian and Cuban genes. He does, he does. <laughs> but um, um, so I, I called a transport company, got my car shipped back to Miami, uh, came back to Miami, joined a uh, Fifth Street gym in South Beach, uh, world famous for Muhammad Ali, you know, and I knew some guys there. So I got in, started training, just to train. December came, December 2016 came around right before New Year's, and I go, hey, I, 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 need a, I need a fight just for a bucket list, for Instagram, to take pictures, to tell my kids I did it. Finally, one time in my life, I got to do this. I got to put my, my balls in a line, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, all this trash talk about fight, street fights ain't nothing. Right? Sucker, anybody gets sucker punch somebody. I want to do this for real. You know what I mean? They come back two days later. Hey, I got a fight for you, Dominican Republic, January 27, 2017. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, that's kind of fast. But, but that's it. I didn't tell nobody that. I was nervous inside. You know, I, I, am I ready? I don't know, but I got to do this. I got to do this. I will not be able to live with myself if I don't do this. I went, knocked this dude out in the first round. And it was the biggest rush high. I've done all right. types of drugs. <laughs> it was better than anything I've ever done in my life. And I said, I found it. I found my niche. I found it. I thought, I thought while I was doing all this uh, stuff that I wasn't supposed to be doing, I thought I was working hard. You know what I mean? I was working hard. I'm, you know, and, and now I figured out, like, no, this is hard work. Yes, sir. This is hard work. If, and if you find something you love, you'll never work a day in your life. And I found it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I like getting punched in the face. It's weird as yeah. it <laughs> As weird as that sounds. You know what I mean? Who says that? Um, I, I love it. Yeah, very few people, but, but I'm one of those people. And, and, and you know, here we are, uh, almost four years to the day of my first fight, but four years now when I made that, when I got on my knees and I found that, that come to God moment, and I just 
set a world record. I'm in the Guinness Book of World Records. I left my footprint on earth, bro, which I wanted to do that when I'm long gone and they Google or whatever is invented <laughs> at that time, <laughs> at least his deals comes up for yeah, the fastest about, knockout. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and the only guy that came to Miami to get out of the drug game. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hey, that was a good one. Hey, that's a great one. That's a great one. Ain't that a bitch. Look, I'll put it by Paul. This is negative to positive, and I know you're absorbing all the knowledge we're putting out there. Our mission is to educate, inform, and also make sure you have a good time while we're doing it. And we're brought to you by State Farm. So keep in mind, when you're planning your future, they're going to get things right when it comes to insurance. Now, it's important to have a little extra change in your back pocket. So I'm taking a, a minute to remind everybody. State Farm has great service and surprisingly great rates. Check them out when you have a minute. They're going to get things done the right way. This podcast is all about elevating ourselves and changing from negative to positive. When we were looking for a partner for negative to positive, I came up with State Farm and I want to tell you why. Three reasons. Number one, we're going to get knowledgeable agents. Number two, you're going to get great service and great rates. Tremenda sorpresa. And number three, you're going to get the real deal. Because like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And number one, number two, and number three... That's everything that Pitbull embodies. <laughs> I'd advise highly that you check them out. You know what it is. And another, and another really, really, <laughs> and another really, really, really dope thing about this is that. Speaking of dope, yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I had to use uh, that word, huh? And that was my mistake. <laughs> but, uh, another su super awesome, cool thing about this uh, is that the other, the knockout, the fastest knockout before me was George Mosby, though, which is a guy from Miami. Another Miami oh, wow. So yes, two sir. Miami guys are holding a world record. In eight seconds, two guys are sleeping. You know By the way, I mean? right. two Miami boys that fought in the street. Right, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. I mean? both, both of their fighting styles came from literally. Right, right. That right. does not streets. surprise me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and it's, it's amazing, man, that our, our you know, and, and I heard once uh, a senator from I don't know where said Miami's a third world country. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> We're, we're just we're just different down here, you know what I mean? And and if you're from here, you know it. And if you come down here, you figure it out quick. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And um and it's amazing to me, man, to be up in the books with these guys, when be in conversation with the, with these people that 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 I'm a fan of, man. You know what I mean? So and those it, guys that were bad business to you in in, in Colorado, you got to send them a gift basket, man. By well, default, uh, they sent you in the well, right this, direction. Those guys are like, what is this happening? Because <laughs> you, you know, and and, and I, I I never think about this. You know what I mean? God bless everybody. Yes, and I sir. wish everybody the best. But there's uh, there's people out there that, that that wish bad upon you. You know what yeah. I mean? And you got to get that energy and make it. It's, it's almost. You ever heard yeah. of this martial art? Well, clearly you uh, fighting, but a martial art called aikido. Of course, yeah, where you, you take, utilize people's energy. Right, right. Of That's course, it. of course, you, of course. And, but honestly, I never think about that. I never think. Nah. It, co it comes to mind. You know what it comes to mind with, with certain things. I think about like right, like before this fight. You know, we're looking for a couple sponsors. And they're like, uh, yeah, we'll get back to you. You know, they kind of give you the play play. You know how that, that, oh, that is. Sure. And then this happens. They're like, yo, what's up, bro? You want to you, 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 Oh, no, that's when you nope. <laughs> We'll get back to you. Yeah, yeah you know, and, 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 yeah. And, 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 I, and I don't do it. I don't do it out of, like, out of spite or anything. But now my doors are open. I, I need to, I need to See, shop around. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Now you have leverage in whatever deal you're going to do. Absolutely. But now people understand that you, you, your team, understand your value, your worth. Right, right. You know, a lot of people, that's why I say with this... In, in, in instant gratification. Right, you swipe up and forgot what just happened. Two seconds oh, ago. man, yeah. it, it's all low-hanging fruit. Man, low-hanging. No, they want to pick it up. Do you know it's, it's just they don't understand what that, what that really, uh, what it embodies to put in that kind of work, the right. discipline you need. The, the, you know, the other day I was talking to him, I was like, hey, what's up, man? You know, I seen him out with his woman. I said, boy, you better handle that tonight. That looking, mm, you know? He said, I can't do nothing, Papa. <laughs> I oh, can't yeah. do nothing because you know your, your legs get weak if I yeah, do yeah, any yeah, of that. Yeah, I said, yeah, oh yeah. boy, good thing I, I became a rapper, not a fighter. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You did tell me that too. You know what? I, I'm, I'm glad you bring. I'm <laughs> glad you... <laughs> That's terrible. Bueno, that, bueno, I, yeah, yeah. Be local. I took it out on this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but I'm glad you brought up that point because, yeah, yes, the fight was three seconds. Yes, the fight was three seconds. The last three seconds, there was a lot of hard work put behind this. And I have to, I have to say, you know, shout out or whatever, however you can put it. Yeah, your team. To, to, no, yeah, to my team, for sure. Yeah. But most of all, to Orlando Guayar, Commando Zero, my coach, which puts in day after day after day. This guy has 26 world champions. Uh, a week before my fight, I fought November 13th, Friday the 13th. On November 7th, he got inducted into the Hall of Fame for boxing. He's been boxing. Coño, good for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
So, Coach, I love you, Coach. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. He's my father figure when it comes to, like I said, I never had a real male role model or nothing. I, you know, he's my father figure when it comes to the, the combat sports. I listen to every word he says. Uh, before this fight, there's pictures of me, which are amazing pictures of him. He, you know, he does this every fight. He grabs me by the back of my neck. He pulls me in. He prays. He does a lo loud prayer that I had to walk away. I'm like, damn, you almost bust my eardrum. <laughs> you know, and he prays in my ear, you know, and, uh, and, he, and he's, he made me into this three second guy, you know what I mean? Let me, let me Not in bed, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, yeah, uh, we, we, ain't, we ain't no one pump chumps around here, you know what I'm talking about? But uh, another thing too, like when I, when I hit you up the next day and basically just saying like, congratulations, but don't let up. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. I left focus. my own after party early. He'll tell you, uh, yeah, yeah. Bass was there. I, I left my own after party early, because uh, that's it. I've... But what's crazy is he told me, he's like, Chico, you won't, you won't know two things. Number one, you manif you, the, the, what you were thinking, right. you manifested. Absolutely. As far as the knockout, yeah. and then as far as this podcast, you were like, "Hey, man, I'm, oh, I, I want to holler at Pitt to see." You got that piece of paper where you? Wrote? No, it's not a piece of paper. It's on the reminders on my phone. It has the date when I wrote it ah, down. Okay, I wrote it down uh, the, like the Monday. I, I fought on Friday, like probably Monday, but maybe the week before. I wrote. Uh, I called Pitt to tell him I want to be on the podcast because I already manifested that I won the fight. Look at that. You know, I, 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 I before God, bro, God strike me dead if I'm lying that if I didn't envision every second of that three seconds. <laughs> and, uh, and that, and, and then Brandon Schaub, which is another guy who has a podcast that I listen to all the time. And, uh, and I wrote those two down. And, and this one came to fruition already. Brandon Schaub, I know his, his manager, he, he, he called, he called the, the guy I know and told him, yeah, I, I, you know, I don't know if I could have him on, but I'm definitely going to talk about him well, on the show. You know, which is, it's all coming to life, and, right. I, and I want people to know out there that even though Yuli's my dog, my brother, I love him, I die for him, kill for him, the whole nine, and I don't just say that, you know, right. we don't talk about it, we'll be about it. Uh, with me, I have never given him anything as far as when it comes to him taking his career to another level, he's mm -hmm. earned it. The reason he's here is because he earned it. He, he, uh, anytime he's like, hey, can you repost this? So this, that, and that, I said, nah, man, it ain't time for that yet. Absolutely. You know, when we get to that level, I'll let you know. You know, because I don't want people thinking that just because we know each other, someone ain't earning their keep. The same thing I do with my jits. You know, jits down here are kids. Yeah. Just because someone we know each other doesn't mean that people ain't putting in that work. Right, there's an easy way out, right? No, no way. So just for everybody out there, understand that no matter, and, and vice versa. Right. If no. I'm looking for an opportunity or, or trying to create one, and he's like, man, I don't think that you're at that level yet. But when you do and you get there, you know all doors are open. Of course. So again, I'm proud of you, Bobby Dagel, man. Thank, thank you. And and you said something that that that, that touched base for me. Again, this is how great I, I feel our friendship is. You know what I mean? Like, so one day, this was a while ago. This is probably I I, I want to say about two years ago. I was fighting at the Hard Rock. I had to sell my own tickets to make my money. And uh, we we're on. Uh, Did a good job, by the we're, way. We're on La. Thank you. We're on La Valcita together one day, and I had brought my tickets. And I'm like, I'm like, bro, you mind like taking a picture with me with the tickets? And you're like. Like, nah, bro. You're like, what are you gonna get? A hundred likes? You know what I mean? Uh, and it kind of opened my eyes to it, like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> you're right. Like, he always, that's one thing, you know what I mean? Like, he always. Perspective for you. Oh, yeah, he, he always, like, he always gives me things with sense. It's never just a no because it's a no. No, it's a no. Why? And he has an explanation behind it. What are you gonna get out of that, bro? Like, yeah, like, it, nothing. You know what I mean? You're not gonna sell an extra ticket because you take a picture when you would take it. You know, but. You don't realize that the moment once somebody explains it to you, you know, I needed that explanation basically. You know what I mean? So, so yeah. you know, uh, the good thing right. is that, and, and Yuli, my, my mom was like a, a mom to Yuli also. Absolutely. And, you know, even when when certain things, my mother took a, a vacation, you know, she's always with us now, right. literally. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I asked, I asked, Yuli wanted to set up basically like a training center somewhere where he'd be away from everything. And I said, man, yep. let me talk to mommy. And I told mommy, hey, is it cool? Right when she was about to take her ride, if Yuli were to make the house like a training center where you were staying at. And she said, I wouldn't want it for anybody else to have it other than Yuli. Yeah. So Yuli made it a training center and, you know, they get the chance to be there and stay out of what, what the... What the bullshit is at the end of the day. Show me, show me your friends, and I'll show you your future. Mm. Absolutely, you, you know. And, and I have a picture of mom overlooking everybody there when we were training. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, and let me tell you, uh, through, through COVID has actually been a blessing for me. You know, mm -hmm. I got to build, we got to build that gym up, uh, in uh, you know, in in the in the backyard, and and and, and a ton of people that uh, we've kind of. Helped, you know what I mean? We've helped a lot of people. A lot of people hit me up, yo, I got this and that. And listen, I don't want to hear none of your problems, brother. What we do back here, you know, you leave your problems over there, leave them in, park them in the car, come over here, box a little bit, and watch how you leave a whole different person, you know yeah. what I mean? And, and sure enough, man, we've been helping a ton of people. 
Well, I've just, uh, combined, we've probably lost about 500 pounds in my backyard between all types <laughs> of people, you know? And uh, it's been a true blessing, man. A true yeah, blessing. It's awesome. On negative to positive, you know, we always talk about success. What goes into it and what it takes to make it and to making sure or, or making sure that you guys are on top of your financial game. That's where NetSuite comes in. It's time to stop paying for a lot of those programs that don't give you the information that you necessarily need and when you need it. That's why I say forget about the old spreadsheets and the old software. We need you to upgrade to NetSuite uh, by Oracle. You're in the business world's number one cloud business system. Whether you're crushing a million or hundreds of millions in revenue, NetSuite lets you see what's going on. It, it gives you what you need when you're driving the business, visibility and control over all financials, HR, inventory, e-commerce, and more. Everything you need all in one place. That's NetSuite. So whether you are a thousandaire, millionaire, or billionaire, <laughs> you need some NetSuite in your life. You need to get down with a product tour at NetSuite.com slash Pitbull. NetSuite will show you how they'll benefit your business with a free product tour at NetSuite.com slash Pitbull. Ahora sí, schedule your free product tour right now at NetSuite.com slash Pitbull. Well, with that said, uh, any, any more questions, Paul? You good? Not for this one. Knock you no, out. I want to be, right. be here for the next one. Whatever the next one is, I'm going to have a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah, this know. one, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> The Cinemax late night one. Well, maybe we're going to figure out when Paul's not here. Yeah, right. Because <laughs> <laughs> me and Yuli, we've never been good at answering questions. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> no, let me tell you, man. That was, that was the hardest thing to get into. They asked me they, they, when I first started, like, you know, when I first went legit in boxing, and yeah. I was like, people would ask me on podcast, and, I, and it was this, this weird feeling. It's me like, should I answer this question? <laughs> I need, like, a lawyer for like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just a deposition? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where were you on the night of? <laughs> Or I before, don't recall. Be, before we before we wrap this up, I want to tell you from the bottom of my heart, my brother, thank you so much. Oh, I love man. you. You're drawing inspiration to me, man. And and this is amazing to be here with you and share this moment with you. And there couldn't be a better name for this podcast. So <laughs> negative so positive because, yes, that's my story, but that's our story. You know, yes, we, we both did it from nothing to something. And uh, and we're still and we're still working. It's we're, still working. There, there's never there's never a stop. You know what I mean? You know the, when when people. Uh, since people get caught up on, on ages, I always tell people, age is nothing but a number. That's right. They get older, we get younger, all right? <laughs> but, and that's clearly what, what you're doing, right? There's this guy named Bernie Marcus. Bernie Marcus, uh, so I'll start with the name, all right? Just tell you a story. So Bernie Marcus at 48, he gets fired from his job, not because he wasn't doing his job. He was extremely doing his job, or <laughs> doing a good job, I would say, you know? So he, they didn't want him to climb the, climb the corporate ladder, per se. So they fire him. So he said that day, I'm never going to work for nobody again in my life. He got into this thing with tools. He said, mm -hmm. well, everybody needs tools one way or another. All right. So 30 years later, multi-billionaire, okay, and he owns Home Depot. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And he, and he started at 48. 48 and he started at 48. So anytime when people come about, oh, but you're this age or you're this or you're that to anybody out there, just always know it's the truth what they say. Hey, better late than never. Two things. It's never too late to be what you wanted to be, what you could have been. And consistency over time equals success. Be consistent, put the time in, and you will be successful. It's the truth. Been listening to a lot of Tony Robbins, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Little, little, little Tony Robbins <laughs> slash, slash Pitbull motivation here, you know what I mean? I got on my, my playback list. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but man, for, um, on behalf of the team, from, from Laz, Jenny, myself, Paul, and everybody that's here right now, we want to say congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. Extremely We're proud, very of you. proud of you. Love you. We're making history, man. Miami, stand up! <laughs> Huh? Ain't nothing like representing the crib, baby. So y'all do solid. Love you, boy. I love you. I love you.